take a look at this. You've seen it before. I know you have. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You've got your rows of data and they've got columns. That's the way the data looks like when it comes into a Natiza system. Each row is going to be put, the entire row, on a particular SPOO and that's the way they're going to spread the data across all of the SPOOs and that's the way I want you to see this data. Very recognizable. We're going to learn how to see the data, see how it's stored, see how it's processed so we can absolutely get the most out of our Natiza systems. When you create a table on Natiza, I'll give you a little clue about what's coming up. You'll pick one of the columns as your distribution key. And that's what we've done here, and that's how the data will be distributed. They'll actually hash that distribution key value on each row, and then that'll be what lays the data out. Here you can see we have our employee table, and we've got three SPOOs. We've got 12 rows. Four went to SPOO 1, four went to SPOO 2, four went to SPOO 3. Now that everything's out there, it's ready to process this in parallel. That's why they say is born to be parallel. They've got the parallelism with the spoos, but the brilliance is they've got the parallelism because they break up the data row by row with each spoo responsible for their portion of the table. When you go to the airport, you take your luggage. And that's the way Natiza works when it stores data. They don't just have rows on these spoos just out there all over the place. Whenever a table is being built, they're going to open a three megabyte extent, and that's where each spoo is going to store the rows in that three megabytes. And when they put that luggage up, that's what it's called an extent. It's like you have in luggage, all the rows are in the luggage. When that fills up, they get themselves another extent and they might have two luggages and that's the way things are going to be stored. All rows of a single table will be stored in an extent. You'll never have one extent with rows from two tables. It's very organized. You're not carrying luggage for other people. That's a real no-no at the airport and it's the same way in the TISA. When the query comes in, the optimizer says, we want to process this table. Each one of these spoos take their luggage and they go, here's my extent. Hey, check out the zone map. Is it possible that there's no way the data is in here? If that's the case, I don't want to move that block. But if it's possible, then they have to bring that luggage or that extent of data inside the memory where it's processed like lightning. Wow, this system's really growing. We've added a lot more rows, so each spoo has had to open another extent. And that's the way it's going to work. You know, when the optimizer says, process this table, spoos, each one of them is going to take the first extent, look at the zone map in the FPGA and say, is it possible that I should bring this in? If that's the case, brings it into memory, processes it, gets the second extent, brings it, looks in the FPGA, sees if it wants to bring it in. If it does, it processes that in memory, and that's the way Natiza is going to work. And here's a great visual of that. We're processing this table. We bring in the first piece of luggage, extent one. We process it. We bring in extent two. We process it. Now, the brilliance behind this again is they've got the FPGA card, and each one of those pieces of luggage have that zone map. So before any of that data moves, they're going to check, based on that query, do I need to bring this block in? That's what's wonderful about Natiza. There's no user intervention. All these zone maps are automatically set up by the system. So you literally create the tables, load the data, and go. You might run a query that says, select everything from the order table. OK. In this case, you're going to see that each one of these spoos has a ton of extents for this table because this is a big table. Filled up three megabytes, continued to add extents, and that's the way it's going to do. A full table scan will be the slowest query on Natiza.
No problem, because you've got a lot of parallel processing to run these, but any time they can get around that, they'd love to. That's the slowest processing you're going to see. You know how bad I want you to see that data. That's the only way to become a star in this industry. How's the data laid out? How's the system going to store it? What's the ordering? How's it going to be processed? This is an excellent example. I want you to notice each SPOO's disk and their extents. Every extent has the zone map right on it, and the only thing it cares about is what's the min and max value in my block. Of course, the zone map's going to always check that out to see if it needs to bring that data in, and you can see here how the FPGA is going to read that zone map before it even considers bringing that big, heavy block into its memory. And that's the design that I want you to focus on right now, because that is the secret sauce of Natiza. Here's the point to the max. The query comes in, select everything from the employee table, where the department number is equal to 400. Now, that's going to be put into the FPGA card. That's what's so clever about this. They can actually write to a chip, and that's what Natiza figured out. So, just before that spoo says, I'm going to bring my block in for processing, because this is my employee table block, they go check the zone map first in the FPGA, and they go up there and they go, oh, what is the min and max of department numbers this block holds? And they go, from 100 to 300, and Natiza says, stop right there. There is no information in here that could possibly satisfy this query. Eliminate that block movement. That's how it works. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Serving the data warehousing needs of the world for 20 years. Check out coughingdw.com for more information.